best part of my day, talking to you all about penny stocks. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Wednesday, February 21st, which means, say it with me, tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. Well, I do. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm there for about an hour, hour and a half with my co-host, Taylor. We're taking requests. If you've got a stock you want to share, you just want us to take a look at, bring it on in, drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the DD, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth. Now, to be completely honest, if you drop the ticker during the show, chances are I'm not going to be able to get to it. I actually put up a placeholder for this video around lunchtime, and you can drop your ticker in then, and I do go by first come, first served. So anybody who's got their tickers in before the show starts, those are in the queue to be looked at first. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue before the show starts. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what I like to do on this show is just share some of my own personal due diligence on a hot penny stock. I'm talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I am talking about stocks that have potential to make us money. We're looking for stocks that have heat. Now, where do I find heat? Normally when I'm looking at the charts, it's easy to see heat in the chart at a glance. I can be doing other things and just glance at the chart and I can see this big blue tsunami at the bottom. That's volume. I can see the price cutting through a strong SMA. That's a breakout. And everybody knows what going to the moon looks like. So at a glance, I look down, I see a chart that has heat. Now I'm going to invest the time to go through all the filings and the press releases of that company, see if I can find a catalyst. If you can find a hot piece of news to match a hot chart, chances are you've got a hot penny stock, a stock that has a strong probability of running. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got one for you. This is Mott's. Ticker M-O-T-S, Modus GI Holdings. Now, it is her chart that caught my attention. It is a perfect atypical breakout chart that is breaking out right now. Now, what do I mean by atypical breakout chart? Don't go looking that up on Google. You won't find it. It's just a term I use because it is a particular setup I talk about a lot. That's when that 200-day SMA is coming down like a ski slope and then starts to level off. Well, all that time, the price is deep underneath the 200. And as it's coming down, the price is getting closer. And when they get close enough, the price wants to cut through that strong SMA. And that's when you get a run and a surge. And that's where we're at with this. Now, she just had hot news come out today. She got herself a patent. And on top of that, she has got a float that is just unheard of. So, MOTS finished the day little over a dollar. We're at a buck four right now, and she is just under 60% gains. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ, so we're going to be able to trade this for free. There's no transaction fees on the major exchange, and we get to play with the stock aftermarket and pre-market. We never get to do that with the OTC. So, what is Modus GI Holdings about? Well, they tell us here that they operate a medical technology company in the United States, and they seem to be focused in on one primary device, the PureView system, which helps facilitate the cleansing of poorly prepared GI tracts. Now, there are two types of GI tracts, folks. You got the upper GI and you got the lower GI, and they're working with both of them. The upper GI, we've got news here back in November. Modus GI announces first upper GI patient procedure for FDA cleared PureView EVS Gastro. Now, they use this upper GI uh, device to clean your GI tract of blood and blood clots primarily. This is what they have to do before they can get in there and do any procedures. They've got to clean it up. They're looking for bleeders. They're looking for ulcers. So this is the product that they use. But they also use it on the other end of your GI tract, your bowel, which definitely needs to be cleaned. <laughs> they tell us here at the end of uh, January, the company published positive results from a European study of the second generation PureView system in improving visualization of colonoscopy in patients with a history of poor bowel preparation. 
Now, it sounds funny, but it isn't, folks. I was reading, and it's unbelievable how many times a patient has to go through getting their GI tracts cleaned a second and third time because they're not done well enough the first time. This device is doing it properly. We're not wasting time that costs money, and you're not putting the patient through uncomfortable procedures. And then the last piece of news that came out today, the company has been granted a U.S. patent for a key feature embodied by the PureView system to avoid clogging and cleansing the GI tract. <laughs> now again, it's a little gross to talk about, but it's real important. When they are cleaning, let's say your lower GI tract, your bowels, they are spraying this moisture, this water up in there, and there's this suction pulling everything out. Well, every now and then, there's something in there that's too big to pull out. So they release the pressure, quit spraying, and they have a back choke on it. Push it up, dislodge it, and then they're able to free it so that the doctors don't have to get in there and do anything. Again, it's just getting the job done right the first time. So that's what the company is all about right now. That is most of her catalyst, believe it or not. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Big jump, right? We're at about, oh, maybe eight times her normal volume, roughly going from 682,000 shares to 62 million. That is a huge jump, folks. Taking a look at her share structure, look at that. Unbelievable, right? Outstanding share count is just over a half a million. 578,000. I hear you. How do we know that's true? Can we believe it? We've seen numbers here before that aren't accurate. You're absolutely right. And when I saw that, I did want to verify it. So I jumped into their most recent financial, put in the word outstanding, and just started going through it. And this is what I found. Authorized share count, what they have in the bank, which they don't even tell us over there. 115 million shares. That's how many they could put on the market. But they tell us here, as of September 30th, 2023, which wasn't too long ago, they had 530,000 shares on the market. Just over a half a million. So this is correct, folks. Now, this is a problem. On the NASDAQ, you cannot have a float under a million. You can literally be removed from the major exchange down to the OTC if you don't fix this. So they have got to fix that. We know the float's not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count. So this is a detriment. They've got to fix. But talking about trading it today, tomorrow, the next day, I don't think this is going to be a problem right now. It is just a super duper micro float. Now, we've also got a super duper micro market cap of $377,000, and that is a problem. When we look over at the disclosures, we have a 8K here, which is a notice from the NASDAQ that they are not meeting the minimum requirement for the market cap. Now, they don't tell us what that minimum requirement is. I did see a penny stock on the NASDAQ the other day that had the same problem. And the minimum requirement for them was $15 million. What did you see what our price is? $377,000. Now, there's only really one way to fix Well, there's a couple ways to fix it. The market cap is figured out by taking all the shares and multiplying it times the price. That's it. Very simple problem. So that's how you end up with that number. So if you can make one of these two numbers bigger, if we can bid that price up, and I doubt we're going to get it up high enough to make $15 million here, or they get the outstanding share count up, which they've got to do anyways, right? Because they don't have a big enough float. And we just saw they have 150 million shares they could put on the market. So honestly, I would expect some public offerings to be coming out. Now, they have not been given a date. Normally, you get a deadline when you got to fix this. We haven't been given any deadline. They've just been given a warning. So I would be looking for a public offering. But again, as a day trader, all we're concerned with is what is right now. And right now, we've got a super duper small float of less than a half a million. So if they actually sold, and what was it today? Let's go see that again. 
Holy cow, 62 million shares. And let's just round it off to a half a million in the float. That means that all the shares had to be sold 124 times in one day. All the shares, one share had to be sold 124 times over and over again. And if some of those people don't want to sell, they're holding out because they know it's a low float. And when they start decreasing the supply, the demand goes up and all of a sudden you've got yourself a rocket on your hands. That's what I'm thinking we've got. Financials for Mots, are they making any money? Yeah, well, let's say they're bringing in revenues, making money, that's a different story. They're losing money. Every single year, they are losing money. How about the quarterlies? Oh, well, we got some profit coming in. They are making some revenues. They're up and down. They are losing money sometimes, and they're gaining money sometimes. Not real reliable or steady, is it? Balance sheet for MOTS, cash in the bank, roughly six million, total assets, eight and a half million, total liabilities, eh, we're over, we're almost 11 million. So we're holding deficit in this company, stockholder deficit of about two and a half million. So we're lucky the price is up near a dollar in the first place. And I do believe that covers everything here, folks. So we've got a patent that has just come out. They've got a product that is working both on the upper GI and the lower GI, which is obviously going to help doctors. Doctors can't stand having to back up and do something a second or third time. Do any of us like to do that? I know I don't. You should see me making these videos. Oh my God. So we've got catalysts, we've got a super small float, and we've got a chart that is set up and breaking out right now. I am so ready to chart Modus GI. <laughs> this is ticker MOTS, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So I've got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour chart. And I really want to say, wow, we've got ourselves a great high bubble here six months ago of $14.25. And that is what it says, but it's not right. It's a lie. It was in November they had a reverse split of 1 in 15, which means we should see a green bar here pushing that price up 15 times. Where's our green bar? Not there. What happened? What they did was everything. I mean, everything behind the reverse split has now been multiplied by that ratio. In this case, it was a 1 in 15. So everything behind it has been multiplied times 15. So this high bubble of $14.25 was closer to 80, 85 cents back then. And right now, we're at $1.10. That's a completely different picture, isn't it? So looking at the chart, you can see it has been in a downtrend all of this time. We did have some pop off in October, but she couldn't hold this as a breakout. Not with the 200 being that steep. She came down underneath it, fell to a low here of let's call it uh, $3.30. Hit that a few times, broke it, fell down to a new low here of a buck 10, but she wasn't done falling. She dropped another 50% down into the 50 cent range right here, scraping her butt across the floor. Now she wasn't going anywhere, but she was making headway. She crossed her 20 day SMA, her 50 day SMA, just going sideways. And then today, maybe even yesterday, she started to push up and didn't stop. She really rushed it, folks, going from 57 cents up to a high today of $1.86. You're looking at over 300% run. She did fall back. We finished the day at $1.10. I can't tell if we have any aftermarket activity. If it is at $1.10 right now, that would put her above the 9-day and below the 200. Actually, it would put her virtually <laughs> on that resistance right there, right at that. Our volume is very strong and it has just come into the picture. All of our SMAs are now turned up and starting to climb. Oscillators are looking pretty good. PPO had a crossover yesterday. She's pushing up gradually, but she is climbing. Our MACD had a lot of strength. There's a little bit of pullback right now, but not much. 
and our RSI was busting loose in the overbought at 79. She has come down and she's at, ooh, right at the cusp. She's at 55 right now. I don't like to see my RSI lower than that. Let's take a look at our 20 day one hour. All right, so she was here at about a uh, buck, a buck two, had a nice pop off. Boy, that was a nice bounce, going from a buck up to a dollar seventy-one. Real short-lived. Looked like it was pre-market. Fell down even lower, coming down to seventy cents and dipping down to the fifty-cent area, and then getting on our fifty-day SMA. You can see that she's riding it. Got excited when she got through the two hundred here. Took a little bit of a dip, then she took a crouch. That's what that is, folks. She came down, she dipped down like a cat because she knew she was going to jump high, and that's exactly what she did. She got up on top of that 200, and once on top, just a wee bit, she launched herself. Rode that nine-day escalator all the way up, and it looks like at the bell, we'll see at the five-minute, she came back down to that nine-day at about a buck eight after hitting a buck 85, and pretty much went sideways until the very end of the day, she started to fall away. All of our SMAs still look good. Everything is riding up nicely. Our oscillators are showing weakness coming into the picture right now. All of them are starting to trend down just a little bit. Take a look at our five-day, five-minute. So she was really right there with all of her SMAs, the 200, the 50, everything. Crouched down to that 57, came up and then, I mean, jumped. This was a big, strong bounce there from 63 cents. That was almost 100% bounce. That's $1.16. Boink, straight up, came down to the nine, rode up again, hit a new high here of $1.60, fell down, got real close to our 200. See our W here? At the end of a W for winner, you get a run. There she goes. She's taken off. So it looks like she... Opened up the day at about a buck 80, and oh boy, horrible, horrible. Soon as the market opened, she fell fast and furious right down to that 200 at 96 cents. So she lost 50% of what she had done pre market. And then she rode that 200 all day long until she got to the 200 haul. Now, you can see here, she's trying to break it. Now, I got to tell you folks, the 200 day haul is a lot like your 200 day SMA. Both take 200 days of prices, average them together. But the 200-day haul puts more credence on current prices. So you've got two long-term lines on the board. And I keep saying that penny stocks respect the 200 haul. Well, I've been playing options on the SPY. That is a $480 stock, and it is paying heed to the 200 haul. So the 200 haul is a big long-term line that carries a lot of power. So these prices are respecting it. She tried to break out through it here, couldn't do it. Tried a second time, could not do it and broke off. Now she's under her 200 day and her 200 haul. She is working her way back up and she's got to cross all of those right now. She shows she is in recovery right now. Our PPO has just had a bend and is starting to come up, just like our MACD and our RSI. All of them are starting to come up right now. And looking at that four-hour chart, that to me is a perfect setup, folks. She was dragging her butt across the bottom, hit this low bubble, the crouch before the pounce, straight through the 200, really strong, lots of volume. And don't forget, we've got a float under a million. I don't know what it is, but it's under a million right now. And if this stock gets a lot of volume tomorrow, like it did today, we could see a serious pop-off. I'm putting MOTS not on my watch list, but on my buy list tomorrow. And I'm going to watch because she's at a great buy point right now, right down there at the bottom. Now we are going to watch. Let's take a look here. She is still falling, right? At five days says she is still falling. She's come underneath. Now, is she tagging anything? Let's look at our 15. No, there's no lines on our 15. How about our 30 minute? Ah, she did come down. She hit the 50 day SMA. She came down. I'd be looking for another wick to come down, if not a full bar, and hit this 50 day SMA on our 30 minute chart and bounce off of that. 
that's my guess. It is just a guess. So MOTS, folks, is looking good to me. She's got a catalyst. She's got a low float. She's got a hot chart. She needs a little more due diligence from you, right? Because I didn't cover everything. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.